Good morning, good morning, Impact iKids. Mr. Anthony here with another message series for you. Listen, we are glad that you are here. We are glad that you are tuning in. We have a message for you today. It's going to be an amazing one. Uh, so I hope you're excited. I hope you're ready. Get ready if you're not ready. Uh, get prepared if you're not prepared. Tune in, get your popcorn, get your juice box, get whatever you need ready because it's going to be an amazing message. Uh, but before we get into it, how are you? How are you doing? Uh, continue to reach out to us, continue to send emails to us. We would love to hear from you. Love to hear how you're doing in this season that you're in. And but without further ado, let's get into this message. I said, let's get into this message. Uh, and I will see you after. Let's go. I kids. Woo! I kids. Let's get it. Sometimes it's the smallest little thing. <gasps> That's my grandfather's pocket watch. He doesn't need that little gear piece, does it? Yeah. Hang on for the loop. Four, three, two, one. All right, there it goes. Good as new. Oh, goodness. Okay, uh, let's see. It says that it's 4.68 a.m. in March. Good as new. I'm Ricky. And I'm Jamie. You know, every time we talk about purpose, we talk about the unique traits that each of us have to help others. You know what's a unique trait about you that I've noticed, Jamie? What, Ricky? <laughs> I love your ability to just uh, walk into a room and immediately brighten it up. You are just so... Uh, positive and bright and you care about every single person that you interact with. I Thanks, love that. Thanks, Ricky. I appreciate it. I always feel like you make people feel heard. You're a really good listener and you make them feel really, really important and special. And I love that. Thank you. Yeah. I think it's the little things that make us us that caused us to end up here on The Loop Show. Yeah, I love looking at the inner workings of all the unique talents that God has brought together to make The Loop Show The Loop Show. Yeah, from the teachers to the characters to the illustrators. To the crew, everyone is where they're supposed to be. In the historical empire of Persia, there was a queen named Esther who faced a big problem. Her cousin and father figure Mordecai had insulted a man named Haman by refusing to bow to him. Because Haman was your standard prideful villain type, he put an evil plot into motion. He knew Mordecai was Jewish, so Haman used his influence to convince King Xerxes to kill every Jewish person in Persia, women and children, and especially Mordecai. King Xerxes agreed and decreed this plan because he liked Haman and wasn't particularly attached to any Jewish people, or so he thought. What the king didn't know was that his wife, Queen Esther, was Jewish. She had never shared that part of her life with him before, but now, her position as queen and her Jewish beliefs were exactly what were needed to help others. She had been put by God in the right place at the right time for the right reason. Mordecai sent Esther a message challenging her to change King Xerxes' mind. He hoped she would somehow stop the king from killing their people. She agreed to try this not so simple task. Esther knew if she went to the king without an invitation, she could be killed but she had made up her mind saying, if I die, then I die. She bravely put on her royal robes and went to the king. He was amazed by her beauty and asked what she needed. She cleverly asked to throw a banquet and put Haman on the guest list. Haman arrived at the banquet completely exhausted from constructing a structure where he could publicly hang Mordecai for his insult. At the right moment during the feast, Esther revealed to King Xerxes that she was Jewish. And because of his decree, not only were her people's lives in danger, but her life was too. Esther grandly exposed Haman and his evil plot, causing King Xerxes to fly into a rage. He ordered that Haman be publicly hanged on the very same structure intended for Mordecai's death. When the moment came for Esther and Mordecai to make a difference in the world, they were always right where they needed to be and exactly who they needed to be. They bravely lived a holy life dedicated to helping others. Nothing stopped them from stepping in, not even the threat of death. 
You don't have to wait for someone else to help. You can step in. God made you who you are to help where you are. That is one of my favorite books in the Bible. And that's just a broad view of the book. If you want to check out all the gory details, you can read the story of Esther in the Old Testament. It's a story full of twists and turns. <laughs> Speaking of twists and turns, we have a challenge. Uh, today, we are turning the Tables on the Loop show crew. We are taking over this challenge. The crew does so much unseen hard work to make this show happen, so we are going to take some time to spotlight them. Surprise! Surprise! Loop show crew! This episode's all about you! Come on over! Yay! I wish we were going to be using tiny hands, but... Surprise! See, they thought we were going to do a challenge about tiny hands, but joke's on them. So while we get set up, let's do a little tiny hands transition. Wee -wee. So one thing that I love is that God has given you and I unique enthusiasm, different interests that they energize us, and even different skills that we are just naturally good at. If you think of them, they probably come to your mind instantly. Maybe it's you're naturally gifted at sports or leading other people or in school, in band, and those things, man, God gave them to us for free, right? There was nothing that we had to do to, to earn to be good at that. There was no accomplishments we had to achieve to be good at these things, to be interested in them, but God gave them to us for free. And the thing is, is that they aren't for just us, but they're actually for the people around us in our world. And maybe when you think about just how big the world is, you feel small and you don't know what to do. What I would encourage you to do is find something that you can get behind, right? Use the gifts, use the power that God has given you to make a difference in the world around you, both physically, but also spiritually, because God has given each of us unique enthusiasm to make a difference in the world. To see what I'm talking about, let's check out this quick video. I'm Addison Moffat, I'm 11 years old, and I run with purpose. So Marina and I became friends in 2016 when my mom was running the Kansas City Half Marathon. They were kind of talking about like kids have to go walk to get dirty water and how they don't live because they don't have clean water. I was just kind of so confused because I was only like seven years old and I was thinking that it wasn't fair because I knew kids my age having to go through those things. I was with my mom and I was like, mom, we have to, we have to sponsor all of these kids. And she was like, we can't do everything, but we have to do something. So I committed to say yes to run the Kansas City Half Marathon and fundraise for kids in Africa so they can have clean water and just ask people to help. So I started off very small. It was $1,310. It kept growing bigger and bigger, and I think we raised over $20,000 the first year. I kept fundraising, and overall, I've raised over $150,000 in my lifetime. It made me feel good because I didn't really know what response we would get because I knew I was little and I didn't know like how much money I could raise and I really just wanted to help and I was very surprised because I was not expecting that much response. Then in 2018, the Steve Harvey Show wanted me to be on there. Uh, my next guest is on a mission to change the world, to help kids in Africa gain access to clean water. Please welcome Addison. Hi, Addison. It's a motivator because even though I know I can't save all of Africa and get them all water, I know I can make a little difference with all of the money that I'm fundraising. I, I knew I was young, but I didn't think like being young could stop me, and I just wanted to keep pushing forward and keep making a difference. You just gotta find your passion and you still gotta just go for that dream. So our honoree right now is Tommy. You've seen him. He 
has been in a bear suit mm -hmm. and a tutu. I wanted to give you a pat on the back for being brave and being on camera, especially when you're in the bear suit and your beautiful ballerina skills. Thank you. Tommy's role on The Loop Show is to be the producer, which means it's his job to make sure that we don't just keep doing silly things all day. He keeps us going mm -hmm. forward and keeps things organized. Thank you, Tommy. See if you can do both. <laughs> Tiny handshake and big pat on the back. Awesome. So this is Kelsey. This is our production designer. So everything that you see from our wardrobe, hair, makeup, the set design itself, Kelsey is in charge of that. Also, props. In case you haven't noticed, we have a lot of props for The Loop Show. There are some things that just don't exist in the real world that mm -hmm. Kelsey is responsible for somehow creating for The Loop Show. Mm -hmm. So thank you for all of that. And thank you also for having so much fun with us. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well done. Mm -hmm. And, and a, a pat on the back. This is Chris and he is our sound recordist. He's a very good Listener, yeah, that's good. Okay, but all jokes aside, Chris does an awesome job miking up Ricky and I, all the different characters. Yeah, he's listening to us right now and he's making sure that we can be heard even in the messiest of situations. So yeah. thank you, Chris. Let me give you a tiny handshake. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And a big pat on the back. It's Chris, our honoree. Chris is our assistant production designer and that means that he is largely in charge of actually creating the dishes, the, um, mm -hmm. the, the treats, the, uh... Disgusting food. The disgusting food for our <laughs> challenges, so... He's such a good friend, and he really is passionate about The Loop Show and doing it with excellence. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. to celebrate a lot of people who were on set, but we also wanted to celebrate some of the people who do a lot of the work after we're done shooting for The Loop Show. Uh, and so this is Savannah. Yay, Savannah! So Savannah is our editor, the video editor, who basically takes all of the things that we do on The Loop Show and puts them together into somewhat of a coherent episode. And she's also able to do super cool things like transitions like this. Wow. She can also put cute little otters in our hands. Aww. Look at that cute little otter. You're probably looking at the footage right now. Just say, say hi. What, like, what's your reaction right now? All righty, here we have Jeff, who is our audio master. Very fancy. But really, what he does is so important. There are some times on The Loop Show where we get really loud, and then there are some times that we get, <laughs> that was a funny noise, really quiet. And he is able to take all of that and make sure that it's not too loud when you guys hear it or not too soft when you hear it. Not only that, but he also adds a bunch of really fun sound effects. For example, like this. <laughs> or like this. Oh, that's a good one. Looks like we're brushing his teeth. <laughs> Tiny handshake and a big pat on the back. And there are so many other people that we didn't get to thank that also do an amazing job to make The Loop Show what it is. There are a lot of unseen people doing a lot of really great things behind the scenes and not just in The Loop Show, but outside of The Loop Show. Mm -hmm. So who is somebody that you need to give a little really handshake to and a big pat on the back? Make sure to thank them. Hi, Allie. I'm the internet, but you can call me Wubbles. Yes, hi, Wubbles. It's good to see you again. Hi, good to see you too. So what you working on? Oh, you know what? You could probably help me with this. 
So I was talking to my friend Lily, and she was talking about how she really wants to help make the world a better place, but she doesn't really know how she can help. She's 12 years old, she doesn't have a car, she doesn't have a job, she's not like an environmentalist or a doctor, and she doesn't really know what she personally can do. Mm. This uh, sounds like a question about purpose, and uh, so you should ask the Bible app, not me. That's silly. Ha, I'll talk to you later. You know what? Actually, you can help me. Oh. You can do a search on people who have changed the world. People who have changed the world? Okay, well, the first people that come up are uh, politicians, we got scientists, doctors, we got uh, inventors, poets, uh, manufacturers. Ooh, uh, manufacturers, let's go with them. Yeah, well, manufacturers are the people who make all the material goods that you need. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, for example, did you know that when there's a hurricane headed towards land, sale of Pop-Tarts go up 700% in those affected areas. Pop-Tarts? Yeah, so yeah. manufacturers anticipate the needs of the people in those areas and provide enough Pop-Tarts to suffice. You know, I think you're onto something. We can help make the world a better place by anticipating the needs of others. We can anticipate the problem. Ah, that, that, that is the trick. <laughs> That's the trick every inventor has to start with, what's the problem, and then figure out how to solve it. So like uh, uh, the inventor of the, the, the traffic light, huh. You know, before traffic lights, police officers were just standing at street corners telling cars to go and stop. What? Yeah, wasting a whole bunch of their time. So, William Potts said, you know what? I'm gonna dream big. I'm gonna invent the traffic lights so I can save police officers a whole bunch of time. You know, again, I think that's it. We can, we can dream big and imagine how we can make the world a better place using the power that God has already given us. Hmm. So, like Lily, right? So her brother has a really heavy school load this year. So that's anticipating the problem, right? She needs to help her brother. She can help him by freeing up some more of his time to step. She can do some of his chores for him. Oh my goodness. He's not gonna have enough time, so she can do the chores to use some of the time. Oh, you're brilliant. Oh my you're brilliant. I never would have thought of that. Oh, you helped me think of it. Oh, well, that's really flattering. <laughs> <laughs> so, how can you help? Start with the moment that's right in front of you. Anticipate the problem and do what you can. I think we got everybody. Yeah. Oh, mystery hand. Thank you, mystery hand. Thank you. <laughs> Can't do it without you. So God not only gives us unique talents, but also gives us unique ambition. If you see a need, meet a need. Just like Esther and Mordecai, you can help out wherever you are. Yeah, you have God's power to help others. There are everyday heroes everywhere. We are here to help. Until next time, enjoy, enjoy the ride. ride! I want each of you to look at the week ahead of you and ask yourself, what can I do to help someone around me? What can I do today? What can I do this week? And then I want you to dream bigger. Let's pray. God, we love you so much. And we thank you that you give us an opportunity to partner with you and helping other people. Please place opportunities in front of us. Show us where there are people in our lives that we can take action and do something to help and show your love. We love you, we trust you in Jesus' name, amen. This week, we'll be praying for you as you find opportunities to dream big and to do things for people in your life. Welcome back, Impact I Kids. I hope you really enjoyed that message. I hope it helped you grow in your spiritual walk with the Lord and just help you get that deeper relationship, a deeper connection with God. Uh, this month of August, I challenge you guys to do the 555 rule if you haven't been doing so already, which is five minutes of prayer, five minutes of reading your word, and five minutes of worship. Uh, worship doesn't only have to be music. Uh, you can worship God through your painting, through your art, um, through sports, whatever it is. Worship is just devoting yourself to God and whatever you do, devoting it to God. And so let's worship. Uh, let's worship the Lord. Uh, but if you can, put on some music. Put on some gospel music. Put on some Christian temporary music. Put on some Christian hip hop. Put on something that allows you to get in tune uh, and just put some positive things going into your ear. Um, some life-giving music going through your ears. So that's my challenge for you for the month of August. Uh, but yeah, that's my challenge for you, I guess. Yeah, and so I hope you do it. Let me know how it goes. Uh, keep me updated. Uh, but let's pray ourselves out and then I will see you here next week because you're gonna come back here next week. You're tuning in because these messages that are going to happen for the month of August is going to be phenomenal. Uh, but let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today, God. God, we thank you for just loving us unconditionally, God. We thank you 
for uh, giving us purpose here on earth, God. So, God, we just thank you. Continue to speak to us. Continue to reveal your plans for us, God. Uh, I pray that as we continue to walk with you, God, uh, that we just continue to grow uh, in ourselves, God, uh, and grow in our communities, God, as we continue to walk and learn more and more from you, God. I pray that you protect that family from things seen and unseen. Uh, and I pray that you just continue to have your way in our life, God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, Impact Ike is listen, come back here next week because we have another amazing message. So I expect you to be here. I expect you to be here. Uh, until then, have a great week. Uh, and I will see you here again. God bless you guys. Go like kids. Woo! I kids! I did not know what I was doing. I was like, mm -mm, I don't know. God bless you guys though.